Share your love and creativity for baking. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Last week on the Tastemaster SA, the competition kicked off with a twist. Working in pairs, contestants had to bake a two-layer cake, heroing two random ingredients. After a grueling bake, it was Lacerro and Fifi who came out tops. But for Lazelle and Annie, it was an emotional finish. Together with Damien, Chantel, Maxine and Glenda, they must fight for their spot in the first Elimination Challenge. I'm nervous about being in Elimination. The whole Limpopo would be so disappointed in me if I don't make it. I'm holding thumbs and crossing fingers and toes and really hoping to make it to the end of the competition. I don't know how I'm feeling. I'm a bit nervous, but I'm positive at the same time. I'm, I just want to bake. And so here we are at the very first elimination challenge. You know, it really brings this competition factor into play, but also there's a lot of pressure because today we will be sending two of you home. Now for this week's theme. Going into the colder winter months, we always gravitate towards those warm, comforting bakes that feel like a hug in a bowl. Of course, I'm talking about winter puddings. I love puddings. Any warm winter pudding, give it to me, especially if it's citrus with a nice custard on the side. On to today's challenge. There's a pantry staple that we can always rely on and that is good old custard. But there's so much more you can do with custard than just serve it with Marvel pudding or brandy pudding. Today, your challenge is to get creative and show us something new and exciting. I'm going to reinvent a pudding and hopefully stay on the challenge. Elevating the pudding is easy, but the custard, not so easy. To get you really inspired, we're going to send you on this competition's first masterclass. You will be meeting this week's guest judge. So, get going. I think it's fun that we're going on a little adventure and it's going to be nice to learn actually from someone who's in the industry. Even with the elimination challenge, I will take a few tricks and tips from the masterclass. My name is Anna Stofberg. I'm the head chef here at Drum by the Meal in Philadelphia. Drum is a restaurant that is built inside the old flour mill that was established in the 1800s. It's got that old homey feel that we love and our food and everything is based around building a memory of nostalgia. Today here at Drum, I'm going to show them how to take a pudding and a custard and present it in a whole different way. I'm super excited to be the guest judge of this challenge and I cannot wait to see what the contestants come up with. This venue is so beautiful. And just being surrounded by farmlands, it's got such a nice energy to it, actually. I'm so excited for the first masterclass. I think it's going to be really cool to see what Anna has for us. I am super pumped. I'm so excited to learn from Chef Anna. She is an amazing chef and so well known in the industry. I'm feeling very excited for the masterclass. Looking forward to meeting Chef Anna. It's my first masterclass. No idea what's about to come. And I feel like I'm in my granny's living room. Welcome guys, welcome to Drum in Philadelphia. Today I'm gonna to show you a little twist on a malfa pudding and a custard. Just to take it and tweak it and present it in a total different way. So let's start with the malfa pudding. It's gonna be about one and a half cups of sugar. Brown sugar especially, just to get that nice golden color on top of your malfa. Two eggs and some melted butter, about three tablespoons. We're gonna start mixing that. After that, we're gonna add our apricot jam, some vanilla essence. And with that, we're gonna add our dry ingredients, which will be about a teaspoon and a half of royal baking powder with your cake flour, about one and a half cups. And one thing that I found out, which is actually really important, is you take about a teaspoon of your vinegar, you add to your milk. Let it sit for a little while. You add that to your malfa pudding mixture. 
when I add the vinegar with the milk beforehand and wait for it to go buttermilky, the texture, the end product of the malfa is just a lot higher and more in volume. Seeing malva pudding being elevated it is a great experience because I've never thought of elevating malva pudding like that way. So we'll pop that straight in there. And that goes into the oven for about 180 degrees for about half an hour. Check after 25 minutes. It's basically when it's nice golden on top and when you pinch it, they should know the batter should be cooked all the way through. All of us know from childhood that sauce that goes over the malfa pudding is actually the star of that whole malfa pudding. So you heat your pan to quite a, a medium-sized heat. You add your butter. Let that stir into a bernazette. I love how Chef Anna started by browning the butter before adding in other components of the sauce. That's something I've never done before, so I'm keen on trying that out. We add our milk. So when you know Bernazette, basically it gives this nice little hazelnut color to your butter, then you know it's perfect. So guys, this is the fun part, which I love a lot. And as a chef, sometimes when you get home, the last thing you want to do is stand hours in front of the oven again. So what most of us have is some ready-made custard in the fridge. So I take this Parmela custard, I pour a little bit of that in there. And as one of my biggest childhood memories that I can ever remember is having custard with thin peaches. So I took the juice of that, that I'm gonna add in here. I'm gonna give that a quick stir just to get it nice and loose. And now the fun part comes where we're gonna make the ice cream in literally seconds. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take some dry ice and we're gonna add this straight into here like an ice cream. I've never worked with dry ice. It's very interesting to see. I didn't know that you actually put it straight into the ice cream. I thought it was like a separate thing. You will see it will start to build up. So as you guys can see, ice cream in literally two seconds. Now the final part of my dish is to build a creme ciboot. You take your custard and you fold it into an Italian meringue. The Italian meringue is basically just sugar, water, and you add it to your egg whites while it's whisking. While it's whisking, you have to wait until your bowl cools down completely. Then you'll have this perfectly stiff Italian meringue. So firstly, what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna take our custard, we're gonna add a little bit in there, and we're just gonna gently fold that into the Italian meringue. Okay guys, so now that we have all our elements ready, it's time for us to assemble. Ooh la la, guys. Just look at that. All it needs now is this flippin' lacquer saucy. So we're just gonna pour that straight over. Get it soak up all that goodness. I love mother pudding a lot because it brings back memories of how my mother used to make mother pudding for us back when we were kids. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our creme chibut. And what I do is I'm just gonna make these splashes. <laughs> Guys, we're going back to our childhood memories here. The second part, what we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble the malfa pudding. So what I've taken is I've taken the malfa I've set it some custard with some gelatin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the malfa and the custard and we're gonna do an opera cake play on it. So we're gonna layer it with the custard, the malfa, then the custard. Put it right, right on top. End it with the last slice of malfa. And then what we're gonna do then is we're gonna take the creme chibut and we're just gonna cover this whole thing. And you guys will see now why I do that because we're gonna blow torch it towards the end. We're gonna blow torch this. So we're gonna end off my version of the Malfa Pudding Opera Cake with our custard ice cream. Right guys, who wants to come and taste? Yeah. <laughs> Everything goes so well together, and I love the custard and how she's incorporated the peach juice into the ice cream. The custard and peach juice ice cream that Chef Anna has made is actually not that sweet, and it really complements 
the malva as well as the little custard gelatin slices so, so nicely. I can taste the meringue, the custard, everything coming together as this amazing new concept. I hope you all have learned something today. Those of you competing in the challenge, I see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, inspired by Anna's masterclass, the bottom six take on their first elimination challenge. Why not order from your oven? With precision, raise your standards and make it matter. AEG, challenge the expected. Share your love and creativity for baking. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Well, I hope you're all warmed up and ready for this challenge after this very inspiring masterclass because there's a double elimination on the cards. Double elimination. <laughs> I hope it's not me. <laughs> you will have 90 minutes to prepare a beautifully baked pudding paired with Parmelitz vanilla custard. How you treat the custard is completely up to you. And at first glance, this seems like a very simple challenge, but we, of course, want to see what you're going to do and how creative you're going to be and put yourself ahead of the crowd. Are you ready to bake more memories? Yeah! Woo! So you start in three, two, one, get baking! Lizelle! Hello. Hello. Hello! I see you've got some citrus and ginger here. Yes! And very much chocolate. Where did and, that and all come seed. from? Um, and a seed. So oh. I'm doing a, a lemon pudding, our old family recipe. And it's close to my heart because my aunt passed away two years ago. And this is a tribute to her. Oh, I love That's it. fantastic. She was like my second mom. I love her two bits. And she gave me all the family recipes. And then I'm doing a chocolate custard. Oh, so that's cream custard. So that's yeah. how you're elevating or yes. changing up yes. the, the yes. custard. Yes. Yes. Okay. Best of luck. <laughs> I am making a Sinner Jane pumpkin pudding with pumpkin infused custard ice cream. It's just a twist on my original mother pudding recipe. So the inspiration behind the name Sinner Jane, Sinner stands for, it's an acronym for cinnamon. And then Jane is my late grandmother's name. It reminds me of her. My name is Anam Gonza and I am 24 years of age and I'm all the way from King Williams Town. I am a chef at a hotel in East London and I bake cakes as a side hustle. I entered the Tastemaster SA because I love baking and I saw it as a great opportunity for me to kickstart my baking business. What I love the most about baking is that it allows me to impress my clients and customers. The beautiful smile on their faces when they receive their cakes brings me joy. I'm making a take on a sticky toffee banana pudding. This recipe comes from my best friend's mom. She passed due to COVID and I was just thinking, what can I do that hits home for me? And this is the perfect way to honor her memory. Damien! Damien! Oh. I was drawn to your station here because I, I thought everyone knew that I don't, <laughs> I don't like bananas. What is going on, Damien? Do you just hate me? I didn't actually know that. <laughs> oh, so embarrassed. I have no idea she doesn't like bananas. Um, so what tips and tricks did you take from um, Anna's masterclass? So I love the fact of the ice cream, but except I'm not going to do an ice cream, I'm going to make it into a mousse. Oh. And I'm going to make the okay. custard thicker into a thicker creme anglaise and then pipe it on the top. Zella, I think someone might just convert you. I don't know, he is piling on that banana, hey? <laughs> Even after saying, I'm not a fan, he just keeps chopping it. I'll leave half without banana in case I change my mind. <laughs> okay, working hard to convince me. Okay, Damien, good luck. Banana is a mouth flavor. So I just tone it down ever so slightly by not putting too much on. I am actually feeling pretty excited. I'm just trying to focus on one thing at a time so that I can stay focused. I'm making a sticky ginger pudding with an orange infused custard. Well, actually, creme patissier, more like a pastry cream, so it's a bit thicker. If I have time, I might experiment with turning that into a more kind of diplomat cream, so mix in some actual whipped cream just to make it light and fluffy. 
Max, we've arrived at the perfect time. We see your custard going there. What do you got there? Uh, I'm making an orange infused pastry cream from uh -huh. the Parmelac custard. Okay. And then I'm adding some white chocolate instead of like butter at the end. Yeah, I need to actually serve this dude. So, okay, so that, that's the custard. What about the pudding component? So my pudding's about to get going. So I just had some oranges in a simple syrup here. It's gonna go at the bottom of my ginger sticky pudding. Yeah, just bringing together the orange and ginger flavors because that is my childhood in a nutshell. <laughs> I've never done this before, so let's see if it works. I'm making orange-infused Malva cupcakes that have got a custard surprise in it and topped with a cream cheese frosting that has a little bit of a custard. Gina, if I, if I have a look around me, I see there's a lot of like two other contestants that's also doing citrus. Do you think it's gonna count in your favor or not? I think it will count in my favor, I hope so, because I'm actually doing this for the first time. Yeah, I had my first Malva experience in the masterclass. Your first Malva ever? Ever, ever. I've always ran away from it because I somehow felt like it's a sweet, sweet, sweet uh, dessert. But you've had pudding before, right? At boarding school, I had <laughs> the oh sago pudding, which I hated, but yeah, I hope I get through this <laughs> in one piece. Really, I'm so cheap, so yeah. My name is Glenda Ramatava, age 39. I'm born in Limpopo. I'm an accountant and a cake decorator, self-taught thanks to YouTube. And I also operate a cake store that sells baking equipment, supplies to aspiring bakers. The reason why I entered Teasmaster SA is that I have friends who are in season two, season three, and watching their journey post Teasmaster inspired me. And for me, it's also to just try to test my endurance limits. I'm going to bring the Limpopo-ness in me and make Limpopo proud. Hello, Chantel. Hello, hello. I'm going to make the recipe for today, because it reminds me of my oma. Okay, tell me. So my oma is the reason why I am in like biking in the car, and so was the cute star monkey with a lot. And I make today for us uh, amarula pudding with a custard jelly in a meringue bowl, inspired by you, naturally. Thank you. You brought from a jelly. Denk jy jou jelly uit getuid? Het jy hom al laat hy set op 'n manier? Ek gaan hom set. Ek wil net hierdie maniertjie in die oond kry. Uh, contestants, 30 minutes down, 1 hour left to go. It's Let's good, go. Good, good, good. Woo! I am on my pudding stage. This is my preserved ginger. I'm going to be adding that to my pudding. Things are going okay. I actually think I put too much cornstarch in my pastry cream. So if I have time, I'm going to redo that. But I just want to get the puddings in the oven because there's only an hour left. And I don't think that I want to be plating up something without pudding. <gasps> Annie, you are the only one that's actually incorporating some veggies into a dessert. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I hope you think about that. <laughs> we'll, we'll remember, we'll, we'll remember that. that. Yes. Listen, but now obviously elimination challenge is a different scenario. How do you rate this bake? I mean, have you had it many times? Have you made it multiple times before? I'm taking a bit of a risk. It's my first time incorporating pumpkin in a pudding. I'm serving it with my pumpkin infused custard ice cream. Oh. I'm going to be using the dry ice as well, which is a tip I took. There we go. The masterclass. That's what the masterclasses are there for. Mm -hmm. So judges, what I've picked up is like, there's a lot of emotional energy being put into this bake. I mean, they're baking for grandmothers, mm. and people that have passed away that are very special in their lives. And that just goes to show you what pudding means. The thing that I also picked up, there's a lot of citrus and ginger and star anise and spices going around. So it's going to be interesting to see kind of the same components, mm. but which one will elevate and stand out. Mm, it's trickier than, than we day. think, eh? Hey? I'm making my cinnamon infused sauce for my pudding. What's gonna give me the edge in this challenge is the fact that I'm the only one going the savory route. <laughs> I got this. I hope it doesn't backfire, but I got this challenge. Okay, so this is an interesting one, and this is how your, you said your, your aunt yes, made my this? Aunt, uh, I normally bake it in a big dish. So I'm hoping this is going to work. I can put slight of clankies from the tight as by a manner. Your ratios are they? Have you worked those out precisely, no. or is it guessing game? This is guessing. Oh, interesting. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> okay. 
I know how to work with flavour combinations and I can work under stress. So I'm currently brulaying a bit of icing sugar on top of the bake. So I'm just giving it a bit of smoky and crisp texture. So when it gets cool, it will, do, it will be like a creme brulee because the mushy banana ain't great. So I've decided to split the bananas. So I'm going to cut the base with a bit of bananas. The middle sponge will have no bananas because Silla doesn't like banana. <laughs> So everyone knows that parmalat is perfect to eat as is, but I'm just adding an extra element to surprise our guests. So, I've added gelatin. <laughs> Your pudding's in the oven already? Uh, pudding's in the oven already and custard. I'm just waiting for this bad boy to boil <laughs> and then it's going in the fridge. Because you've got to factor in cooling time then for the yes, jelly. And yes, definitely. You can't have a hot pudding and a mm. cold jelly because... No. no. Yeah. <laughs> Thank luck. you for the tip, I appreciate Good luck. it. Good luck. <laughs> Watch out, open flame. Well, I'm calling these custard dots. And this is part of the decoration. And you at home can also get involved and bake more memories by entering this week's viewer competition. We want to see what you would have done in today's challenge. Bake your most innovative pudding using royal baking powder, pair it with pomelot custard, upload it onto socials using the hashtag TheTasteMasterSA, and you could win a KitchenAid stand mixer and a pomelot hamper. Happy baking and good luck! As time runs out in the first elimination challenge, the pressure gets the most of some of the contestants. Choose Parmalat for better lunches, better dinners and better family time. Parmalat makes life better and better. Parmalat. Um, so I wasn't sure if this is actually going to work. I've never done this. So this is just parmalat custard with melted dark chocolate and some cream. And then you microwave the chocolate and then just pour it in the custard. And there you have it. I think my flavor profile is going to give me the edge. Pru lacquer. <laughs> Just check my puddings and they're rising really nicely. Still have a little bit of a way to go, but we have 35 minutes, so it should be good. But actually, I'm about to redo them. Max, how much pudding are you making? Okay. There's only three judges, hey? Look at this mess. Look at this. I see it. I see it, but why do you have two? I made one with less ginger, and I've put two mini ones in so I can taste if I want the one that's a bit stronger or a bit weaker. Because also don't want it to be too weak, because then you don't even know it's ginger pudding, right? Right, so you, so you baked the gingery one, you took it out, you tasted it, you, you weren't happy. No, 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 I haven't tasted it. It's still oh. oven. So I just made another one in case. Are we giving you too much time that you're making no, everything? I've actually made two of everything. But I'm not going to get to my pretty garnishes, probably, but I'd rather have a great pudding. Yeah, okay. Okay, well, I'm walking away. <laughs> Damien? Yes. We've about a third of the time left. How are you looking for completion of this uh, bag? At this point, my cake is cooling down. I've got my mousse ready. It's just got to go in the fridge. I'm hoping to start plating at 15 minutes on the clock. Okay. Okay. So I've got so, a game plan. And no concern about your flavor choice of the day? <laughs> Other than the <laughs> all his favorite, but I'm going with my heart. My name is Damien Stimmer. I'm 28 years old. I'm born and bred in the mother city. I am co-owner and executive chef of The Valver Effect. We are a catering company uh, born in 2020, the heart of COVID. Winning season four of the Tastemaster essay. Firstly, the KitchenAid appliances, is incredible. I love gadgets. Like, it's not even about the money at this point. The journey of this whole experience is the reason why I've ended. I would actually like to bring a little bit of finesse to the season, see what I can pull out of a hat, play around with what's given, love adding new techniques and things to everything. What component of the bike are you doing that with? Is, that, is there custard in there? There's custard and a pumpkin puree. Okay, that's interesting. I'm hoping this high risk that I'm taking pays off big time. I hope it saves me and I get to see another day. Alrighty guys, half an hour left. Let's go guys, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Elimination. I don't know what will give me the edge in this challenge given the fact that 
one i don't know what the ultimate malva need to taste like but at the master class i listened i took notes and i remember heating up of the butter such that it creates this nutty flavor i also remember her mentioning that if you put milk and vinegar before you bake your pudding and you set that aside to steep it actually just add in a bit of flavor to it so those are some of the things that i took from it and i somehow do think that it made my malva to be what it is bottom, bottom, bottom. <laughs> Just gonna stand here and watch you. Hopefully, it doesn't make you any more nervous. Oh, you're doing it by hand. Mm. Did you do it by hand with them? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Just whisk, keep on whisk, keep on whisking, keep on whisking. You will start to feel it stiffen up. If it doesn't, you just add more. It's getting there, it's getting there. It's definitely tightening up, eh? Hey? Yes. <laughs> What's yes. going on here? What's Ice happening? Ice cream! Having all the judges in the station while I'm making the dry ice, the pressure is on me. <laughs> She's exhausted! Almost there, almost there, <laughs> almost there. Just keep going. This is hard work. Yeah, I mean, I not like, watching. I was like, I want to use the, the KitchenAid, hey? Fritz? Yeah. Or called Fritz over to help me whisk. That's what I would have These are beautiful. They came out exactly the way I wanted them. The AEG Oon Vormion's bak is perfect. Dit bak alles net precies soos jy dit wil hee. En ek is gelukkig ek het een by die huis. It, it's it, the, the jelly? <laughs> I'm gonna take it out in 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Oh, so, you haven't checked it? No, no, okay. I'm, I'm trying to not disturb them. Oh, got you. <laughs> Got you. So how come some are in a bain marie, some are not? What's the big what is the bain marie is a bit slower? It is. Yeah. I actually prefer the way the puddings come out in the bain marie, but I don't know about time, so I just oh, put it. That oven is packed full. There are three layers of things cooking. There's puddings from left to right. There's just so much going on. So yes, I'm very grateful that we have ovens about this large. Yo, touch and go. No, that's clotted. I'm gonna just do one more. Hmm. I had not expected to be so clear to make it. And I had then another element set up, which was the coconut, which was not my plan. Was nie. So I had a few good things set up, which I could add to it. With the plating of my dessert, I revert back to the masterclass and I'm going to stack it. Because I know that at least three or four of the contestants are going to use a ramekin or a little cutter. This is cool. I just cluttered the screen for the second time because I was busy getting the burnt white chocolate out the oven. Okay, prize for the actually most chaotic goes to me. Amazing. Okay, I need to stop plating. 10 minutes to go and I'm actually seeing stars at this point. The custard pastry that I had planned is just not not what it was. So we are throwing whipped cream into it. We're just making it lighter. I'm saying we, me and mild ego who knows how to bake, because clearly I don't. <laughs> so it's basically taking the Malva cupcake pudding and I'll call it, have my prepared custard in it, then I pipe my cream cheese frosting and I'll top it up with a glazed orange. I'm trying to get this a nice consistency so that I can add it to the meringue. It is water, sugar, and corn flour. There we go. This is known as a twill. So it's just corn flour, oil, and water. Shaken up, throw it in a hot pan, water evaporates, and you're left with a hopefully a little web. And I'm starting to plate. Yeah, so I'm going to add it on top to give it a bit of more depth. It's risky making my dessert in a little stack. It was puppeteered in our master class. There's a bit of plagiarism to an extent, but I made it my own. I'm not 100% sure about the flavors because I, I haven't tasted it. I actually did not taste it yet. So I'm hoping that all the taste wows them at the end. That is not too gingery. It's only two minutes. I don't know how they're two minutes to go because there were eight minutes to go 30 seconds ago. I am pulling a plate out of the drawer. I'm actually just going to throw things on there at this point. Because I have made so many things twice, I actually don't have time to plate like I thought that I would. So I am happy with the way my bake comes out the oven. 
my pudding tastes like I stand a big chance in staying in the competition. I'm looking over to my opponent Chantal and I am super surprised by how she's struggling because I've got it all under control. I've seen how you have jellies set, that you have gelatin boiled. I get I think this is a problem. Um, gelatin soak you all day in your in your warm water and then clutch your net until it's all and that's it. No boil. Nie. The pudding base, at least I'm happy with that. And then I wanted to make a meringue on top. Maybe somewhere in the planning, I didn't put enough time for that beautiful, beautiful meringue. But the custard was gorgeous. Why didn't you say it? Why? Contestants, you have 30 seconds left. Final touches, make sure everything's on the plate. Come on, guys. Let's go, let's go, guys. Let's go. And more than that, I'm going to kill it with sweetness. Looking at my competitors, I'm feeling safe. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. Step away from your bakes, everybody. Step away from your bakes. Where did that go? Well done, well done guys. Well done. Today started off on a bad note. I had a plan of action, I wrote it down, but when reality came, it was dear my God. I'm quite proud of it. The lemon mousse set quite nicely. I did a bit of a custard foam and I think the flavors will come through nicely and hopefully I convince a little of bananas. I feel very better as the first challenge. I get focus on the basis of good and what good smell and I hope it comes here by the judges. I'm feeling overwhelmed and I just hope all the risks I took are worth it. I'm a little bit disappointed because there were a few other elements that I wanted to plate up with. But there's a pudding on the plate, there's custard on the plate. I know it tastes good because I've tasted all of the 400 that I baked, so that's good. <laughs> Does my recipe work? Yes. Does it work in 90 minutes? No. I'm feeling heartbroken because I don't want to go home because I know I've got it in me to show the judges, but hey, at least we've got more for pudding. <laughs> it's definitely not the prettiest wine, but <laughs> they say like love makes you blind and I'm hoping they fall in love with my pudding. With a double elimination looming, it's an emotional roller coaster as contestants present their bakes to the judges. Share your love and creativity for baking. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Judges, a seemingly simple challenge turned into a bit of havoc near the end. What do you think went so horribly wrong for some? I think a lot of them focused on too many elements mm. rather than just keeping it simple and make that pop. Right, and perfect that. Yes, and perfect that. In an elimination challenge, you, you tackle the things that you know for certain, yes. you know, things that you are familiar with. And we had a lot of first timers here. Mm. Like, I'm trying this for the first time, mm. which is risky in an elimination challenge. Exactly. Yeah, I thought maybe some unnecessary risks taken, but we'll see. Maybe some of it pays off properly, and then, you know, I'll eat my words. On that note, let's bring on the first pudding, shall we? Let's Thanks. go for it. I'm walking up to the judges and all I think is I hope I put enough sauce so that's nice and moist. Ooh, Ooh, look at that. Damien, I have to say I love a bit of food theatre. You know, it just tantalizes a few more senses than you know stuffing off ices so i uh, i really do enjoy it how did you reinvent the custard i added some custard to the batter itself and then i made the custard mousse and i made a custard foam on the side right damien you know how i feel about banana <laughs> <laughs> see if this changes my mind should we dig in yes dig right. in. They've been judging by their plates. Clearly people who love banana definitely enjoy this. For me though, I think the pudding is a little bit stodgy. I wonder if you needed more raising agent in that or maybe the bananas just weighed it down. I absolutely love your mousse. The texture is beautiful. The flavor is very subtle. 
I also would just would have liked if you maybe soaked your cake in a little bit of a, like a banana syrup. And I think also your bananas, is, it's a bit raw. But overall, definitely you nailed it on the banana. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this childhood memory where banana was also a big feature. I, I love the flavor of it. And there is always like this chance that there's a little bit of a stodginess to it. You know, it is this density to it. So for me, this highlighted a lot of memories. The mousse was excellent. Small tweaks, advice that should be taken, but a very, very enjoyable bake. Thank well you. done. I'm hopeful that I'll bake another day. I baked what I baked with determination. There's always the first time for everything. And I think this is my first time. Hi, Glenda. <laughs> You've got this, you've got this. What's got you so upset, Glenda? I'm not upset, I'm just overwhelmed. Overwhelmed? Overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell us about your delicious pudding. <sighs> These are orange infused Malva cupcakes, literally with a custard surprise inside them. Okay, we're gonna give it a taste and give yes. you some feedback. Thank okay? you, Glenda. enjoy your innovation around your interpretation of a pudding. I think it's inspired to serve it as a, a cupcake. I love the surprise element of the custard on the inside. Your cream cheese, custard buttercream, the lightness that it adds mm. to this, I thought that that was fantastic. What would have taken it more into a pudding direction is soaking your sponge just a little bit more with um, a sauce of some sort. But in terms of flavor, that subtle ginger, that orange as well works really well together in terms of flavor. I absolutely love this cupcake. This is like a bite of heaven for me. I can easily eat 10 of these. <laughs> Thank you. The flavor is so masterful. Mm. Everything is in extreme balance. I really enjoyed it. Mm. Mm. I'm hoping, as this is the taste master, that my flavors will help carry me through to the next round. What happened today? Honestly, I'm, I'm really heartbroken. I really wanted to make a big statement with a, a jelly custard. Unfortunately, it did not set in time. It still looks delicious and inviting to me, so. Yeah. Right, let's taste. Okay, let's, let's go. dig in. Definitely do taste the amarillo. Mm. <laughs> did no? you do anything to the custard? or did you just set it into a jelly? I just set it into a jelly. If it was purely a textural thing, I don't think, personally, like that would have been a game changer here. And in saying that, I would say like, then there's not much else. Next time, don't worry too much about textures, but mm. more enhanced flavors. Because at the end of the day, you can have a lot of textures on your plate, but if the flavor is not there, people are gonna take one or two bites and then they're gonna leave it. What's missing for me here, is an additional texture. I think you're missing a bit of crunch, a bit of interest, a bit of mm. just one more element, whether it's a brittle of some sort. You know, we talk about elevating a pudding and custard uh, dessert, and this needs just a little more elevation for me in terms of texture. So it's like not judges to do it, it's like confident. But I can also come if this can work. Hello. I can feel a knarty ook gebring, and it bring a bit of vanilla moonigheer uit. Okay. Come on, skip. Are you happy with the way everything turned out? Pudding came out exactly like I planned, even the custard, so I'm elated. Well, let's dig in. Yes. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> thank you for it. Lizelle, I have to tell you, I think this is a dessert right up my alley. I think might be a little bit too much sauce for me. Okay. I would have liked a little bit more cake. Okay. But other than that, your custard, everything is absolutely fantastic. We asked for a pudding that's sort of a, a hug in a bowl, and I think that this is exactly what that is. I love a saucy pudding like this, and the texture of the sponge actually worked out perfectly. I love the flavor. I think that your aunt would definitely be proud of what you put forward today, so well done. You obviously know what you're doing. Thank you, that thanks is, so much. very clear to us, very enjoyable, well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
my pumpkin pudding is still intact and I just hope they love it. And I hope they pay attention to how much risk I took to pull this off. Here's my heart. <laughs> <laughs> so, were you happy with the outcome of your ice cream? I was happy with the outcome of my ice cream when I tasted it. And do you think with the working of the pumpkin pie and the ice cream, they would complement each other? I think they would. Should we dig in? Yes. Let's dig in. Oh, oh. oh look at that. I think this is a, a, a really decent attempt. And I love the flavors, but I think there's some technicalities that's maybe let you down a little bit. It's very dense, and the ice cream for me is very crystally. It's not that creamy experience of an ice cream that I had envisioned. For me, I obviously got lucky because I got the first scoop of ice cream and the texture of mine is perfect. The pudding is lovely and light. I think that it was underbaked. I think that the center needed more baking time. In terms of flavor, I think it's really delicious. And like I said, that edge bit that's perfectly baked, delish. The pumpkin tart is quite sweet, but then your ice cream is not so sweet. So for me, the balance in that regard is perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. Thank you, Annie. <laughs> I'm feeling quite calm. I am happy with how it tastes. There are some elements that aren't on the plate. Yeah, I've done the best that I could in the time that we had. Max, firstly, I want to say it looks like a great save. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you made some of your things twice. I think after challenge one, where we were nailed a bit for our flavors, I was so conscious to get them right this time. But at the end of the day, it cost me a lot of time that I could have put into plating and finishing off the final elements. You're ready. <laughs> oh, I'm so ready. Yeah. I love this. It's really so deliciously moist. The flavors are so well balanced. I love the little candied orange strips on there, the custard and the white chocolate. I thought classier. I feel like this is the little gingerbread man mm. dancing on a plate completely. I think you should have just called it like your ginger spongy moist cake. The custard was delicious. The texture of your cookie or your, your biscuit mm. that you made, mm. the twill that you made, also added some great texture. Um, for me, I wanted more custard, but a very pleasant dessert. You should be very proud of yourself. Well done. Yes. Thank you so well much. Well done, and you at home, don't forget to bake more memories by getting involved in this week's viewer competition. You've seen what the contestants can do. Now we want to see what you can do. Show us your interpretation of today's challenge by baking a beautiful pudding using royal baking powder paired with pomelot vanilla custard. Upload your bake onto socials using the hashtag TheTasteMasterSA. You could win a KitchenAid stand mixer as well as a pomelot hamper. Best of luck, happy baking. Contestants, well done and congratulations. The first elimination challenge was definitely not without its drama, but I saw some beautiful bikes today and it shows a lot of potential of what we can expect down the line. So congratulations and well done. I know this was not easy. Glenda. Lizelle. And Max. The three of you are safe. <laughs> <laughs> you will be going into the next round. <laughs> don't cry, don't cry. On that high note, I would like to give just a little bit of recognition to someone which I thought took the Parmalat custard and just made it absolutely beautiful. That cooked from the heart and soul and blew us all away. And with that, Glenda, I want to produce to you the Parmalat pen. Yay, I have the pen. I was actually more worried that I'll end up being a mem for crying in my hometown, but now this is like it. This meant so much to me and yes, I'm happy. Right, will the remaining three of you please step forward? 
Guys, the reason why you guys are in the bottom three, it was literally small technical stuff that set you apart from the top three. I think take this as a learning curve, focus on simplicity, small things, check your stuff over and over again, and just build and grow from this. The first contestant who will be leaving the Tice Master Kitchen is... There's a big chance I might go home at this stage. I don't know what my fate is. Chantelle. It is not what I had hoped my experience would be here. And I'm just standing here thinking, this is not my best. The second contestant to leave the Thais Master Kitchen is... Annie. And that's it, my time is up. The two of you can take off your aprons, hang it up, and you may leave the kitchen. Thank you, ladies. The competition was a lot of fun, but it's not the end of the line. I'm gonna focus on my long-term goals and I'm gonna head back to sea. This is definitely not the end of me, Chef Anam. From here on, I am flying high like an eagle. And for the rest of you, congratulations. We'll see you in the next round. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Next week, who will take one step closer to the Taste Master SA title, along with 250,000 rands worth of prizes and the opportunity to kickstart their media career as a traveling foodie and TV chef on the Expresso Morning Show. Another feel good production.